Welcome to a very special episode of SpaceX in the News. My name is Kevin, and today I'm reporting to you from my hotel room <laughs> uh, here on South Padre Island, which is just north of Boca Chica, Texas. I'm here to attend Elon's Starship presentation tonight, and Starship will be our main topic of discussion this morning. We're also going to go over some new findings concerning eminent domain, and the wife is back to tell me that everything I say is wrong. Then we'll finish up briefly discussing what's new with Crew Dragon. Let's get into it. Okay, so a lot has happened to Starship Mark 1 here in Boca since my last video on Monday. For starters, a big crane truck rolled on site out of nowhere and placed the nose cone on top of Starship's upper half. That nose cone was packed full of internal equipment to help balance the rocket, which included a couple huge Tesla batteries strapped to the side of the header tanks. I assume they'll most likely be used for controlling the fins, and perhaps some other things as well. Speaking of fins, last week we covered the aft fins being placed on the ship, but a couple days ago, the forward fins were placed on the nose. And personally, I think they make the whole vehicle look a little bit more aesthetically satisfying. I'm warming up to it, but I think like most of you, I still miss that tri-fin look. SpaceX did move Starship closer to the front gate, so it will be better featured during Elon's presentation tonight. <laughs> but check this guy out. He's really putting his back into it. So honey, how was work today? Well, Martha, I showed the world's biggest rocket who's boss all by myself. And what about these guys just nonchalantly lounging on the LOX tank? Do you think they're talking about how crazy it is that they're sitting on a vessel that will one day go to space? Or are they just eating lunch? You're dripping your mayonnaise on the spaceship, Frank. Elon surprised us all when he informed us that for the past several days, three Raptor engines have been mounted on Starship. Now, these engines were more than likely mounted for display purposes only for the presentation and are probably going to come off sometime after today, but maybe not. If you're wondering why it looks like those engines are inside the belly of the beast or inside the skirt or interstage, well, unlike a Falcon 9 interstage that is fixed to the top of the booster, Starship is designed to dock with other Starships via their aft ends. Elon tweeted that SpaceX is no longer pushing for higher performance out of their Raptor engine designs and instead are focusing on production. They're currently on serial number 12 and that there's so much power going through these engines that it's close to the limit of the known physics of materials in many places. And speaking of heat, Starship is designed to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere at a pretty shallow angle. In fact, it will generate lift during high Mach 3 entry. So while it will be exposed to plasma scorch for a longer duration, the shield will not be subjected to extremely ridiculous heating. Just ridiculous heating. In fact, Elon said it will definitely take more than one pass when returning to Earth from Mars. And at least for the foreseeable future, Starship will continue testing with the non-sweaty heat shield tiles. But here we go. Yesterday, after many months of sitting next to each other, staring in awkward silences, the top half was placed on top of the bottom half. That's right, they got it on. And yeah, it looks quite impressive. If you weren't already aware, Starship is a big deal. This is the closest thing we have to putting boots on the surface of Mars. Or in Elon's words, Starship will allow us to inhabit other worlds to make life as we know it multi-planetary. Cameron County has further invested in their spaceport. They will be holding an opening ceremony for the new amphitheater they built that will serve as a part-time viewing location for SpaceX launches. And speaking of the county, a new Business Insider article released this week and a really interesting development came to light, but I won't spoil it for you. That's what my wife's for. So obviously you guys have a lot in common with me. We both love rockets, but you're also gluttons for punishment because look who's back by popular demand. Why, why? So Carrie, Business Insider released this new article that shed some light on this developing situation with um, SpaceX and buying up property from the locals. Kind of inform me and I guess them too, since they're here, what's going on? Cameron County, which is the government authority that would have the power of eminent domain, actually created a nonprofit entity in 2013 called the Cameron County Spaceport Development Corporation. And essentially it's like a mix between a public and private business. We don't really need to get into that part, but the county actually extended its eminent domain authority to this entity in the event that, you know, private negotiations don't go well with the residents or not all of them accept offers. This development corp would essentially have the ability to initiate condemnation proceedings and exercise the powers of eminent domain. All right, but in order for the government to exercise eminent domain, the property that they acquire has to be used for public use, right? Correct. Okay, then how does SpaceX qualify for that if they're building a spaceport? So 
the way that Texas and Cameron County has formed this Spaceport Development Corporation is when it was formed in 2013, it was actually formed for the purpose to support creation and development of spaceports. So because it's a government, it's an arm of the government, it's exercising governmental authority, you could say that the spaceport issue in this instance qualifies as like a governmental function type thing. Therefore, the, they could easily state that they have the authority to exercise eminent domain because in 2013, the legislator passed House Bill 2278 that said, we're creating this development corp and it's for spaceports. Therefore, they now have the authority within the legislator, per the legislator. That doesn't really surprise me because I think in that article I read that the state of Texas um, had acquired property for the use of airports and even a stadium. So I think they'd get away with the spaceport pretty easily. Yeah, I think it was a safer bet on their part to actually implement something by the legislator. So there would be no question that a spaceport will qualify as a public use for eminent domain authority. I don't know if they've hit that deadline yet, but word on the street is a lot of them are going to refuse to sell. Do you still think they'll be given a second offer? Yeah, they might. I mean, private negotiations are always better than having to go to court. Any lawyer will tell you that. Any good lawyer will tell you that. So do you think if they refuse to sell, even with the second offer, that uh, going to court will be inevitable? Not going to court necessarily, but the exercise of eminent domain proceedings, for sure. The It would go to court if you know the residents wanted to fight it, but it sounds like- If they wanted to fight eminent domain? If they wanted to fight the taking of their land, correct. Okay. So it would go to court in that case. Um, do you think there's any chance that SpaceX would just be like, all right, we're done. We're not going to deal with this. We're just going to head to Florida no. and stay there? No. Okay. Not with everything that they got when when they First. decided to start in Texas. And I don't know the specifics, but I think they got, I think SpaceX got 10-year tax abatement or something. So I don't know when that- And grant money, right? I don't know. Yeah. I think that, I don't know when that went into effect, but they would at least be there until the 10-year property tax. Yeah, so the state of Texas yeah, alone is heavily invested in the success for SpaceX. Definitely. So not only does SpaceX not want to leave, but the state of Texas has their back, basically, essentially. I mean, yeah, I, I can't think that... That's a big fight. A government would put that much backing into a project if they weren't in it for the long haul. And it's it's good for the government, or the state of Texas. It's, it's good for the county, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, it's just not good for those couple residents that don't want to leave. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess that concludes this interview. Um, thank you so much for stopping by, Carrie. I know it was a long trip for you up to my office. You have any other words you want to say? My Back to you, Kevin. Thanks, two days ago, me. NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine sent out a pretty cool tweet reminding me why I like him so much. Quote, I am looking forward to the SpaceX announcement tomorrow. In the meantime, commercial crew is years behind schedule. NASA expects to see the same level of enthusiasm focused on the investments of the American taxpayer. It's time to deliver. NASA astronauts were photographed participating in evacuation exercises wearing SpaceX spacesuits. They were simulating emergencies prior to liftoff in preparation for future Crew Dragon missions. And speaking of which, an application for special temporary authority has been submitted by SpaceX to the FCC which basically means what could be the in-flight abort test may happen as early as November 23rd. Well, that's all I have for you guys this morning. I know it's been a few episodes since I've done an honorable mention, but maybe next time. Instead, I've been focusing a lot of my energy on another project that I'm hoping to share with you here real soon. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Make sure you tune in to SpaceX's YouTube channel tonight to watch Elon's Starship presentation. It should begin sometime around 6 to 7 p.m. Central Time, that's local time, or 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Godspeed. Bye. Go away. Player loser. Hey. These SpaceX in the News episodes are made possible by the generous donations of my Patreon members. And if you'd like to see even more space-eccentric content, consider becoming a Patreon yourself. Even a dollar a month will get you access to exclusive videos not available here on YouTube. There's a link in the description. And God bless, my friend.